Is it okay to pray to Jesus? And she said, young man, you sit right here. I'm going to get my Bible. And she walked to her room to get her Bible, and it was like the Holy Ghost. I, I, I asked, I said, Lord, is it okay to pray to Jesus? And this is what was spoken to me in a thought. God is my witness. He said, when you're praying to me, you're praying to the Father. I said, what? And so, and so when she came into the room, she opened her Bible up to Isaiah 9 and 6. And why don't we stand for that reading? This is just how I came in. Nobody in my family was baptized in Jesus' name. No one in my family was in the truth. No one, there was just a few of us going to the Catholic church. I mean, to the Methodist church, I'm sorry. But uh, we were going, that's all we did. We didn't know anything else. And said, so here I was praying, seeking the face of God. And I said, you know what? I, I don't know the word of God. I don't know how to pray. So I told God, God, if you will show me, I will learn. If you will teach me, I'm ready. I just don't know how to do it. So when Sister Natty Mae Hart brought her Bible in there and she opened it up, she said, I want you to read this, young man. And I said, okay. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his government shall be upon, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. She said, read it again. I said... For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I said, it's okay to pray to Jesus. I said, I've been wondering that for a long, long time. And now through the Word of God, I'm realizing who he is. You know, that is a love that God has for us, that he wants us to understand him. He doesn't want us to keep us in a mystery. He doesn't want to keep us with questions in our mind. He wants us to know who he is. Amen. And for that question to be going on in my mind for all that time, I'm going to tell you what, God just revealed himself to me. Let's clap our hands up to God right now. Hallelujah. Let's read it one more time. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Oh, clap your hands one more time. Oh, praise God. You might be seated. I'm trying to say that I'm better than anybody else. But then, uh, so I started going to a place where my dad was, he decided to go to church. So, but he wouldn't go where I was going because he didn't need the Methodist church when I was coming up. So he found him another place and I went in there and, and uh, I tried to witness to him and tell him and said, look, I, I, I got this and, and uh, I, I went to uh, uh, Acts chapter Two and 38 and read to uh, they showed me but she gave me Bible study on the second chapter of the book of Acts but before then well I, I I got baptized in Jesus name I repented of my sins I got baptized in Jesus name I got filled with the Holy Ghost and then I started going to uh, my dad's church and I couldn't understand why everybody didn't believe the same you know here you got a church over here you got a church over there you got a church over here it, it they would read the God uh, the Word of God the way I read the Word of God then maybe they can all see the same thing. We could all see the same thing. So anyway, I went to my dad's church, and, and uh, that didn't go over too good. And because uh, uh, some people believe that they can just do just what they want and please God. Look, God, I'm going to do just exactly what I want, and then I still want you to bless me. Well, it doesn't work like that. It's we need to bless him. We need to do what he wants us to do he wants us to do let's put it get it right it's not about us it's about him and so 
then I went to my dad's church trying to tell him different, and uh, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, you need to get into a church that believes Isaiah 9 and 6. And so I found that place, and when I went there, I just felt the, the love of God emanate through the people that was in the church. It was nothing like I've ever felt before. I felt the genuine love of God emanating through those people. They were so nice. They were nice to me. They weren't begging for something, begging for money and begging all this stuff. And they were just, they were just full of love of God. I said, God, this overwhelms me. And so I decided to go there. And uh, if we would turn to Matthew chapter 1. I just thought, you know, the Word of God, if you just start getting into the Word of God and you pray and ask God to reveal Himself to you, He's going to do it through His Word. He loves us so much, He doesn't uh, want to play hide and seek with us. He doesn't want to be the mystery guy like I used to be, the tough guy, you know, when it was 32 below, wear a Levi jacket and a T-shirt, you know. That, you know, good and well, you know somebody's cold, you know, come on. And I said, oh, I'm not cold. Yeah, you're a liar. You're not tough. And uh, now when I wear a big jacket, somebody says, you must be cold. I said, no. Why do you say that? you got those winter gloves on. You must be cold. I said, no. Why do you say that? He said, because you got all this stuff on. I said, no, because I got this stuff on. I'm not cold. So you just dress for the weather. You know what I mean? So if you would just get your mind, open up your mind to the word of God, it's not you better do it because I say it. I want to, we all have, we're going by here, we have, uh, we have a, a, a mindset that we love the Word of God. We're all going by the Word of God. We're all been blessed by the Word of God. Why can't we just stand up and proclaim it? Not saying, hey, I'm better than you because of, because why? You ain't got no better reason to be better than anybody else. Because... We're just all human. But, but we are, are just a different kind of folks that have been exposed to the truth of the Word of God and how God can heal our friends and family, strangers, co-workers, and how He blesses when we don't have work and, and how He gives us understanding and how He gives us a peace that passes all understanding that we don't have to uh, go in, 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 into our... Our, our lives. Uh, there was a girl who uh, was a manager of a, a property manager, and she was observing the the uh, screen of where a guy was trying to commit suicide in the act in the garage. She goes to try to save him. She couldn't do it. She can't handle it. But I'm going to tell you, we have a God that can handle all our problems. He can make a way where there seems to be no way. So. I just want to find out in the Word of God more how I can be blessed, how I can bless Him. You know, it's, it's like this. Somebody says, you got a hundred, I got a hundred dollars for me. I want it all. Give me a hundred dollars for you. I'm not going to say, just give me five dollars. I don't need it all. Give it all to me. I don't need to just a five dollars. Give me the hundred. I want everything that God has to offer me. And so you can discover this in the Word of God. But on the flip side of the coin, you'll find out what he expects out of you. And so, hey, that's a good trade. He does for me. I do for him. Praise God. He doesn't do for me. I'm still going to do for him. Because in the long run, if he doesn't give you what you, you want, what you're asking right now, just give it a little while. The only reason why he doesn't do it, he wants to give you something better. Well, you were asking me for this, but you know what? If you just wait, I'll give you something better. Can you say praise God? All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 1. Now, it's all the Word of God. Like I said, we all got to get to heaven. If we're going to get to heaven, it's going to be from the Word of God. Do you know some people play, say, uh, uh, what do you think about the Martians? And I said, I never met one, but if they are, they're going to have to obey Acts 2.38 too. They're going to have to go through the Word of God. I said, you know, they want to believe some astronomical thing. That Have you ever met a Martian? You never? Okay. You know, I haven't either. I, I tell you. We want to believe the far out, the super, uh, super human thing. How about a super God? 
How about a super God that's explaining himself to us? Why not search for that? I have experienced that. I haven't experienced meeting a Martian from outer space, but I have met with God where he's come into my life and healed my body more than once, more than twice. I can tell you about that, and that ain't a far stretch. That is the truth. Praise God. I can't tell you about that. So I don't worry about the Martians. I've got to learn more about the Word of God. Praise God. If you're into the Martians thing, well, praise God. I'll pray for you. <coughs> I'll pray for you. Let me know when you meet them. Come invite me to your house so I can meet them. Whatever. Uh, chapter 1, verse 18. Everybody found it? Say, I found it. Or look on the wall. That's pretty good. The writing on the wall. Now the birth of Jesus Christ is on this wise when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together. That means before the marriage was consummated. Praise God. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now, I want to give you a little biological lesson. If my dad, who was Ed Hall, and he was married to my mom, Kay Hall, and she was conceived by Ed Hall, and they had C.D. Hall. That makes Ed Hall my father, my biological father. Is that right? Because everybody on the same page. Okay. So, if the Holy Ghost overshadowed the womb of Mary and Joseph, that's before they came together. Okay. Who is the father of Jesus? The Holy Ghost. That's just pure and simple. And when I read that, I said, wow. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to find that out. You don't have to even graduate from high school to find that out, which I did. But you don't have to be some super, super intelligent being, a Martian from outer space, to figure that out. Oh. We find, we find out who the Heavenly Father is and... That is the Holy Ghost. Wow. I read that and I said, wow. I mean, come on. We understand that he, he's revealing himself to us. Then Joseph, verse 19, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee marry thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Okay. Uh, you want to look for a supernatural experience. I'm about praying so much till an angel talks to you. How's that for a challenge? That's better than a Martian. Praise God. I'm going to tell you, in, in the church, God has in store for us more uh, intelligence and more information that the world could never offer you. Don't get caught up in the world's information. <laughs> You'd be racking your brain, bouncing your brain up against your skull. Can't get over that. I mean, but here, something so simple. Something so simple. You pray to God, God answers your prayer. I like simplicity. Simplicity. I don't know about you, but I like when you say, God, would you do this for me? I need you right now. I want to be living for God. Just a 12-year-old trying to get out of trouble, trying to get uh, that pain out of my body, and it happened. That can happen for you. I'm telling you, that can happen for you. God can do exceeding abundantly above all that you may ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Uh, amen. If you can believe it, God can do it. For nothing is impossible with God. For with God, all things are possible. There's nothing that God can't do. If he could change this old boy who never had any teaching, uh, amen, in the church uh, for the truth uh, and bring him out, uh, amen, and put his mind in the word of God uh, to where I have a love for the 
the word of God. And, and it can change my life. It can change my way of thinking. It can change my attitude and put the Holy Ghost in me. And I appreciate it so much. Oh, hallelujah. Clap your hands unto God. Uh, wow, I know who the Father is. Wow. If you just read the Word of God, you just read it. You can't read it just like you read a novel or some other book. You, gotta, you, you need to pray and say, God, open my understanding that I might understand the Scriptures, that you can show me what you want me to know, because God's our Heavenly Father, and He's not going to give us something that ain't good for us. Hello? Praise God. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. All right. <clears throat> Verse number 21. And she shall bring forth a son... And thou shalt call his name, everybody say it, Jesus. Jesus. Why are those all in capital letters? In the Old Testament where you see Lord and Jehovah and Yahweh, it's all capital letters. I, I, I challenge you to do a little homework when you get home. If you will just take the word Jesus and define it, Jehovah has become our salvation. Yahweh has taken away our sins. Go study it out, what that word means. Jesus is not just an ordinary name. It has a deep meaning to it. Uh, salvation has come into our existence. Can you say praise God? Jesus has become our salvation. A miraculous conception. Jesus was born, and there wasn't a human being involved except for his mom. Some people might want to believe in Martians, but they can't believe that God can overshadow the womb of Mary and cause her to become pregnant. There's some evidence here. It's in the Word of God. Okay? Now, this is, listen to this. 22. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, which being interpreted is God with us. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now you're saying that the Holy Ghost can overshadow the woman of Mary. She can become a child. Not a man called Joseph. Joseph was not there. He did. There's a lot of people that can't believe that. There's a church that I was working on in Lawrence, and that senior pastor said, that is impossible. They had to have a man involved somewhere. I said, the man that's causing confusion in there, that it, it did happen. The Word of God said it, and, and the Holy Ghost is the Father. He overshadowed the womb of Mary. That's why God put this plan together. It's all miraculous. What he did, he didn't slip around and have an affair. Even those guys, the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they said, we're not feeding the poor uh, uh, the, the, uh, the seed of fornication. They didn't believe in the power of God. Praise God. They didn't believe in the power of God. They didn't believe in the word of God. But it was there. They would have read it right. just like I did back in Isaiah. Yeah. It's talking about it. So you're going to believe in a Martian, you can't believe in that. But you can believe in the UFOs are flying around. I'm going to tell you what. If you want to get some learning, my dad worked for NASA, and he had this whole sheet, and it showed all of the uh, aircraft that the U.S. had built. And when I was 15 years old, I saw a stealth bomber. It wasn't even complete yet, because guess what? That was way before now. They hit it. Those are all, you know what? I'm not worried about them. I notice our modern spacecraft is so way far ahead of us, like about 40 or 50 years. I read, uh, they had a thing on the internet, and they had the, the Ticonderoga. And it had, it was a, a 45-foot uh, naval vessel uh, 
I think it was titanium or whatever, but aluminum or whatever. But anyway, it had a stern thruster. That, that boat, you could go right here, and the stern thruster, they'd kick it in. It turned a 90-degree angle. It could do 45 knots. And it had, uh, on the, on the uh, crow's nest, it had a dome where it opened up. And we didn't get to see that because we were following. I was working on a big fishing boat. And, uh, th th but they showed it on the Internet that that dome opened up and there was a proton cannon and it shot down a drone. And I said, oh, I saw that in 1981 when I was seeking the Holy Ghost. But they just come out with it last year and said, this is the upgrade of what we have. So don't get caught up in the world. <laughs> I saw it. Uh, hey, look, 1981, right before I got the Holy Ghost. He telling me not. now they say it's brand new and it was and they did it last year. I said, yeah, brand new. They've been hiding it from us. But you know what the, what the best thing is God's not hiding this from us. The government can try to hide something from us, but God wants us to understand him. He's not trying to keep it hidden. Well, I don't want them to know about me. I want to keep me a Mr. Man, a mystery man. He's opened this book. It's an open book. You want to know about me? You want to know about my people? You come in and you hang around my people and you get into the word of God and you'll find out exactly how I feel about you. Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Listen to this now. Then Jesus, uh, 24th verse. Then Jesus being raised from, the, from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. Well, she, she's not a virgin anymore. After Jesus was born, they had kids. Look at Mark, the third chapter, where it said, they came into him and said, Jesus, your mother and your brethren and sister. Your brethren and sister, they, are, they, they, they seek you. They're looking for you. He said, behold, whoever doeth the will of God is my mother, my brother, and my sister. So she ended up in the upper rooms of Jerusalem in Acts, the first chapter. Mary, she had children. Joseph and her came together after the birth of Jesus. They had children. Praise God. Because if not God knew if I leave her there at, uh, at a miracle woman, uh, amen, that they would make a God out of her. Oh, I, I, I read somewhere. Let's see. Let's see where it is. Uh, 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 let's see. Let's go to Luke chapter one. It's not even up there, but I want to go to this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, the first chapter. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, uh, let's see. We're, we're talking about Jesus. Mary is the mother of the Son of God. She is not the mother of God. In other words, Mary is not a God. 135. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. She is, listen, if you read on down 36, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. That just adds the icing on the cake. Nothing is impossible. Let's go to uh, John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. It's all the Word of God. We all have to go by the Word of God. We're all going to have to go by it. 
We're all going to have to, uh, we're going to believe in him and trust in him and please him. We're going to have to go by it. And in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Now who is involved here? Is Jesus involved? Isn't Jesus the word? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. He is the living word. He is the bread of life. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh in the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So the name is important. So what's the name of the Father? Jesus said, I'm come in my Father's name. And ye receive me not. If another would come in his own name, him you would receive. So what's the name of the Father? We, he, Jesus came in the name of the Father. My, my dad's name was Hall. So therefore, I'm a Hall. So Jesus came in his Father's name. So the Father's name's Jesus. Because that's who overshadowed the womb of Mary. It's really all simple. God, I tell you what, I got to have it simple. Don't try to complicate things with me because you lost me. I got to have it simple. When you say it, Jesus, you said it all. Uh, number 10, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came into his own, his own received him not. But as many as received him gave he the power to become the sons of God to even that believe on his name. Okay, I read that. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Wow. Wow. Well, do you have any more like uh, uh, the Old Testament? Uh, about God. Uh, how about 95? Psalms 95 and 1. 95 and 1. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Uh, who is that talking about? L O R D. There's that capital letter again. We have this sign up here all the time. Uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. One Lord. The Lord thy God is one Lord. So you see on the bumper stickers people have on there, Jesus is Lord. So if the Lord our God is one Lord and Jesus is Lord, there's only one God. We just know his name. You see, that's one thing you say, oh, that's my dad. But that's another thing, I can tell you his name. There's a relationship when you know the name of your father. Can you say praise God? praise God? If you just say uh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you ain't saying no name. You really don't know who it is. But when you say Jesus, the name says it all. Then you have a personal relationship when you have a relationship with his name. <coughs> Verse uh Okay, let's go to uh, uh, Psalms 95, 1. Go to 2, verse 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him. Why don't they say them? They're talking about him. God is a jealous God. It seems like if we made three different gods, really, how, how do they pick three? He's a sweet rose of Sharon. He is a lion of the tribe of Judah. He's a lamb for sinners slain. He was the lily of the valley. He, well, he is. He is the chief shepherd. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the great physician. 
He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last, which is and which was and which is to become. So how many gods are that? Why don't you just say umpteen? But it's all in him. He got it down to a simplicity. When you say Jesus, you are saying uh, Jesus God has become our salvation. That's what you're saying. You're realizing what you're saying. Amen. And if he can take care of your sins, he can take care of everything that falls under that category. Sickness, poverty, loneliness, depression, any kind of ailment that you have, he can heal it. We just read, nothing is impossible with God. That's the word of God. That's the word. I believe it. It's happened for me. It's become alive in my life. I believe it. It has become evidence in my life. And I see how it's changed other people besides me. It's just not for me. Okay, uh, let's go to the third verse. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. So we're talking about the Lord, huh? So you say Jesus is the Lord. Can you say Jesus is the Lord? Jesus is the Lord. <laughs> but the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. So Jesus is a great God and a great king above all gods. He is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. Just with the small printing in Lord, that's the highest title in the family. There's nobody greater than Lord Baron so and so in that family over there. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Let's see. Where do I want to go now? Uh, let's go to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. I, I tell you what, it's all in him. It's all in him. The fullness of the Godhead is all in him. Oh, praise God. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates. Be ready to every good work. Read the next one. The next scripture. Two. To speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers but gentle. Shewing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lust, pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Next. But rather that the kindness and love of our love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Okay? Why don't we go to uh, Titus 3 and uh, 1 and 4. 1 and 1. Titus 1 and 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus, uh, a servant of God and apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and acknowledging of the truth, which is after Godliness and hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began, but hath in due time manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me, according to the commandment of God our Savior. Was that a misprint? Didn't, didn't we just say Jesus Christ our Savior? And now that's God our Savior? He knows what he's doing. You're a man. You're a dad. You're a husband, you're an uncle, you're a brother, but there's only one. Let's go to uh, 1 Timothy 3 16. This is all the word of God. It's all, it's all, it's all the word of God. Not something I'm making up. Praise God. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Who's that talking about? That's the only way he manifested himself in the flesh, through the flesh, was through that fleshly body of Jesus Christ, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. He said, yeah, that's, that's a mystery, but he's revealing it 
Colossians chapter 2. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to the world, believed up, received up into glory. That's all. He did a lot of things. There's only one God. He, he's our provider. He's our protector. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's our savior. He's everything. He's everything. Uh, before we read that, we read uh, Hebrews 11 and 6. But he that cometh to God is possible to, is, without faith is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He's a rewarder. He is everything you're ever going to need. He's going to deliver you from the bondage of sin, uh, even though you didn't even know you had it. Uh, I thought I had everything together. I thought I had fun. I thought I was having a good life. I thought I was happy until I saw that I had to get my sins washed away. Well, some people say, well, I believe on the Lord. So he said, uh, like in Romans 10, he said, For if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, then thou shalt be saved. Uh, read that in the 10th chapter of Romans. That's to the Roman church. That's not to sinners. He's talking to, hey, you Jews, you, you have experienced God, you can confess what you have experienced. How can you confess to something that you've never, how can you uh, 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 confess to the power of the Holy Ghost if you've never received it before? Some people say, oh, that will just happen back then, uh, back, uh, back in the book of Acts. Uh, but I'm telling you, they say it doesn't happen again. I'm telling you, you said it too late to me because it's already happened to me and it's happened to others and it can happen to you if you don't have it. Clap your hands hands on the God. Hallelujah. Oh. oh, hallelujah. So if it, if it took the birth of Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost, it's going to take the power of the Holy Ghost to let us be born again as uh, the third chapter of John Let's read Colossians first, because I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm trying to get finished, but I do have a little more to say. Praise God. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. As ye have therefore received Jesus Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit at the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him, everybody say him. Who's that talking about? Jesus, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's not does he dwell in the Godhead the Godhead dwells in him. He's not the second person of the Godhead. He is the I am that sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel. He is all you're ever going to need. He is the only one you're ever going to see because he is the expressed image of God. Oh, so simple. I got to have it simple. I got to have it simple. Let's turn to John chapter 8. Oh, God. I'm not trying to be better than anybody else. I just, I just, it's like finding a patch of morel mushrooms out in the woods. Oh, when I tasted my first morel, hey, ha, huh. uh, and they grow back again in the same spot. People pay $35 a gallon for it. Praise God. But this is better than the Morel mushroom. <laughs> this is better than anything the world can offer. 
better, better than any high that you could ever get off of drugs. You just don't ever come down to say, oh, I got to get down there on the, the, in the flesh. Let's see if we get off of cloud nine and get down here. We got to share what God has expressed to us. I mean, it's so good you can't keep it to yourself. You can't go hide it somewhere and say, yeah, I got to tell somebody. I got to show somebody this is good. I, I love it. I still get excited about it. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of God. Everybody. Let's go to chapter 8 and the verse of uh, chapter 8 in, in the book of John. I'll get the verse right in a minute. But the book of John, verse uh, 21. Let's try that. Then Jesus again, then said Jesus again to them, to, unto them, I go my way and ye seek me and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, will ye, he kill himself? Because he saith, whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said, therefore unto you, ye shall die in your sins. Now listen to this. If you believe not that I am him, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto him, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I heard of him. Oh, as we stand, can we get the musicians to come? It's all in him. It's all in him. The mighty God is Jesus. And it's all in him. Oh, I love it. Oh, this revelation only comes from God. You can't be taught it in a classroom. You can't learn it, uh, amen, from any man. But it's got to be revealed uh, by the Holy Ghost. Uh, the same Holy Ghost that overshadowed the womb of Mary. <laughs> It's only one. He's God in the Father. He's God in the Son. He's God in the Holy Ghost. Now all these three are one. They're just many manifestations. That ain't the only three manifestations. He's God. <laughs> He's the El Shaddai. You can go through all that. But it's all in him. Why don't we find a place to pray and talk to God? It's all in him. It's all in him. Hallelujah. The fullness of the Godhead is all in him. Mm -hmm.